Hello, this is Beckstein Grand Model 5. That's uh, six foot seven and a half, two meters long. And it's in our polishing room, just finished polishing and want to do the final uh, tuning and voicing and regulation, just fine regulation and so on. So just uh, first of all, for, to have a look at the piano, because it's really grateful to get this piano. It's very unusual to find a walnut finish Beckstein of this age. There are other makes that do walnut pianos, but nearly every Beckstein, I've checked our archives and uh, cannot find any Bex walnut Beckstein's grands of this age. There's uprights of this age, actually, the Model 4, Model 5. Um, uprights are very often worn up, but no Beckstein grands. And uh, the veneer is rather, rather attractive, I believe. So first of all, it would be nice to just feast your eyes on the case. Uh, this um, the, There is actually proper worn-up veneer here, but as, you, as you'll have seen before in our videos, it, it has to be faked on here. So our polisher fakes it on. You'll find all, all grand pianos are the same, um, and the pedals lie too. Some of it is worn-up original veneer, I think, and the rest of it's faked on. And the, the legs, as I say, the, the octagonal parts are a genuine worn-up veneer. As it's in our polishing room, we've got a bit of space, so let's go around the whole piano. Um, and I believe, uh, well, I just think it's very special. Personally, I, I love Warner. As I say, it's normally rosewood of this age or black. Uh, many sold, we've, we've uh, restored many black ones and rosewood is very common for this age as well. I think particularly prettier the Warner swirly, so sort of bird Warner. I think you call this bird walnut if you're a wooden person. I'm not good at wood, I've mentioned before. Uh, rather than figured walnut, it's just perhaps a combination, but I believe that's when it, when it's bird that you've got these uh, sort of circular lines. But if you're a wood person and understand wood, then it, I'd love to be corrected, really. It's nice to learn every time, if, if possible. So again, around the back of the piano, it's pretty consistent, I think. you. Probably agree with me. Obviously, the light's difficult on a, a video. It's always different according to the light that's shining onto it. But this is um, very, I'd say, very warm, honey-coloured. And then you've got these strong black bits as well in it. And uh, around this side here, so and there's the the knob that was used uh, when pianos were carted, literally. Um, they would shut the lid with this, and of course you don't have it on modern pianos, but old pianos sometimes have two of them actually to to, sh to make sure the lid stays shut. Nowadays it's wrapped up obviously and protected very well in with uh, covers, but um, there we are going all the way around. It's uh, quite uniform throughout I think, and uh, we haven't looked at the top of the fall yet, so let's walk round to that. Um, so hopefully the light looks to me as though it's quite similar. I put the flash on to try and seem to be better with flash on. So um, the polishing room, actually, I haven't got the lights on in here either. That's the original uh, logo for the name that Beckstein would have had in those days. And uh, there was a few little bits of repairs that were done to this, but I can't see any of them. I can't, there's no evidence of them. And actually one or two of the letters were missing. There's no evidence of that now. So um, very encouraged by the work that's been done on that. These are, by the way, um, replacement key tops. Um, they were original ivory and we couldn't obviously rescue them. Probably too many of them had either come off and couldn't really match them. But in fact, nowadays it's quite an advantage if, if this piano were to be exported. And we do export quite a few pianos. We prefer to sell them in the UK, I have to say, because then uh, in the piano trade you very often get the same piano back again 10 late, years later. It's unlikely to come back and there's so much work gone into this piano. So. It's quite nice to get them back, but if it's exported, especially to the USA, and I think other parts of the world won't take ivory, they won't take ivory at all into the USA. Um, we can't seem to export it nowadays, so it's quite an advantage in a sense to not have ivory keys. I say, I'm taking quite a long lot of time on this because uh, we rarely have worn up pianos. Rosewood, Beckstein, Steinway, and Blutner, we are constantly be polishing there and have a beautiful pattern to them, um, but we very rarely do Warnock because, uh, say, Warnock Beckstein grands of this age are very, very uncommon. Um, but so there we are, that's the whole case, I think, and I hope you've enjoyed looking at that. 
I missed out the, the prop on the back of the desk. Actually, this double prop's been put on. That would have been on originally. But as a lot of people like a half prop here, then we put that on. And uh, looking at the back of the music stand. So it's very integral, I think. Uh, we'll look at the inside of the piano in a minute, but I didn't show you the underside, which is the same colour, of course. Beautiful swirls on here. Um, I, th I believe they're really attractive. So... Let's go into the piano itself, and as we're on the frame, we'll have a look at that first. So the frame of the piano, um, that's done in a kind of bright finish. Um, and there's the, coming onto the, the bridge here, that's been recapped. So there's the end of the string, German strings, and this is this would be crimping here. Just to stop it coming, uh, if it comes loose, then it can, it can buzz slightly or just doesn't sound so it, the, the sound isn't is destroyed when when this comes loose so they need keeping tight and down the bass end you don't need the them to be like that so there's the bass end of it and uh, just everything done as well as possible obviously so the soundboard has been reconditioned the original soundboard it's good to keep that it, sometimes we do change soundboards but it changes this sort of original characteristic of the Beckstein. So try not to do that. And you can see here the shims that have been made. And you always have that. And we've seen many times before we've shown that. And there's the... That, that's been copied. That's not the original uh, logo. So that's been put on a decal, it's called, actually. And uh, let's have a look at the bass. So these are new, brand new bass strings. Now there's the other end. This is a, uh, a brand new rest plank here. So delignate multi-layered rest plank um, and these nickel pins instead of blued pins here and we have you can see the base string line again as accurate as possible that's <coughs> the pride of string makers to get their line uh, really really accurate and uh, reasonably close to the agraph too that's a sign of a good string maker we'll have a listen to them in a minute um, and there we are, going right through the line. There's the serial number. We put that on afterwards. Um, actually, we had to locate it. It wasn't on here originally, but we did find it. Uh, very often you find Beckstein don't have these numbers, but they do have a number underneath, which you can roughly date it from. Uh, we've got the chart correlating the two, so it's still not very accurate always, but in actual fact, in the case of this piano, it was pretty pretty accurate, so 1894. And... Uh, as the agraphs polished up to and new dampers now let's just look at the dampers raising see if they raise exactly together rise exactly together which they do and the regulation on the dampers let's press halfway and see what happens should be about halfway yes that's right so we've had some fine regulation to do normally um, regulation never stops you get it as fine as possible obviously the longer you take the finer you can usually get it but um, just lifting the hammers up they're lifting about halfway and the touch is always um, excellent the Beckstein touch is I think my favourite touch really uh, of any any piano Beckstein Grand and this age of Grand uh, they've really perfected it by this by this time so let's have a listen to the tone now a bit bright at the moment hammers when they're put on they're put on as tight as possible so they're not all bright they're varied And you expect a very warm bass. So we're very pleased with that. That's as good as... They're pretty consistent, actually. What you do get inconsistency with is in the middle here. can be a bit thin, but that's not. That's why you need to recap the bridge as well, because you can raise the down bearing and... It's a bit bright still. We'll look at um, voicing the hammers now and... Uh, I just want to show you a little bit about voicing of hammers. Break point. If you weren't looking, I don't think you'd tell much difference between those two. Now you can see which ones they are. So that side, that side, we've said before, it's the art of a good piano is to get the break point so they don't notice it. So it blends in beautifully. So that's a Beckstein Walnut Grand Piano in our polishing room, just finished the polishing and about to start on the technical work. That's uh, quite a lot of 
fine regulation and voicing. It's too harsh at the moment, as you can hear. I have started the voicing and did start to show it on the video and then decided the video was too long. Um, sorry, we spent such a long time on the outside of the piano because it's unusual to get a worn up Bechstein Grand of this age. They do warn us in the 30s, uh, but um, this age of Bechstein Grand, uh, we've never ever repolished a worn up one before. We've done plenty of rosewood ones and black ones. So the technical side of it, I'll try and show in another video. But briefly, listen to the tone of the piano. And it's a very delicate piano to play. Just the, I think it's one of my favorite touches is the Bechstein Grand of this age. In terms of longevity, I can assure you uh, it's, as well, it's as well made, if not better made, than a new piano and will outlive a new piano. Um, and that's not an exaggeration. If you're a technician, perhaps you'd like to comment on that. It has a new rest blank, so in terms of central heating, um, it uh, will be fine, just like a new piano. Soundboard, obviously you have to look after any piano to make sure that it doesn't dry out. But you needn't worry about it mechanically in that sense. New hammers, shanks, rollers. Well, I'll show all that in another video. But we will be spending quite a lot of time perfecting touch and tone. Now, finally, if you don't live uh, near us and if you can't visit us at the moment, then um, uh, please communicate by email if you're very interested in the piano, uh, info at robertspianos.com and uh, tell us where you are, uh, any comments you'd like to make. We're very unlikely to get a worn up one of this age again. Uh, and of this beauty, I think it's particularly spectacular. I hope um, you've appreciated the video uh, about the appearance of the piano. So there are some photographs of the insides of the piano on our website on the listing. So you can have a look at those and then uh, we'll make a video later on. Or, or if you want to write to us, we can make a video for you anyway. And if you want to reserve the piano, please let us know. Thank you very much for listening.